Okay. Hello, good evening everyone. Who of you is still awake? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, I think it's time for coffee, huh? <laughs> okay. So is ending so if any of you are waiting to submit please do so now in the next five minutes literally last five minutes for the hackathon please do so okay hackathon is up uh, who of you use or know about tensorflow okay so you already know about deep learning you must have already start using and investigating about it so I'm not gonna explain what you can do with deep learning I assume you already know that my focus with this uh, uh, talk is, OK, I'm going to use the, uh, deep learning. Which framework I have to use and which uh, one, I, uh, what are the differences between uh, all of them? Um, and I will focus on TensorFlow. What makes TensorFlow different? Uh, I start with uh, AI. OK, this is a big word, has been uh, always been uh, uh, in the history, say, oh, it's coming, it's coming. Maybe this is the third wave, it's really coming. Uh, and I like the quote, AI is the new electricity, because it makes sense. It, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be enabling new uh, applications uh, and uh, improve old ones. And uh, uh, AI it has been uh, reborn from this new deep learning that is just old artificial neural networks, but uh, with new, new data, new uh, uh, hardware. And you see the immediate increase on, uh, on popularity. And of course, Google has been doing machine learning for a long time. It has a lot of uh, uh, big data problems, has been using it uh, this internally. Um, and there were, in every of his application, it has some of, uh, of uh, machine learning and deep learning technology right now. So it makes sense that they have some kind of li library intern inside them that uh, allow to uh, explore and create new models uh, to, to help these applications. Um, and our first one was uh, uh, called Disbelief, and it was all uh, closed source. And uh, only recently, then uh, November 2015, they open source uh, uh, a new library coming uh, uh, called TensorFlow. Okay? Um, just, and they use machine learning in every, in every aspect of their uh, system. Uh, um, a news that just came uh, this morning was they using uh, DeepMind technology, uh, deep, uh, uh, deep learning uh, neural networks, to actually optimize the in, uh, energy consumption of their clusters. So just imagine they have a lot of clusters and they want to uh, optimize uh, fans and uh, uh, little details on uh, variables on the entire data cluster. So uh, at the hardware level, no? So it, and they have so many classes that even 5% of less consumption, it means a lot of, uh, uh, of money saved. So TensorFlow from 2015, it got a big spike. Uh, these are other uh, uh, different uh, 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 framework. And uh, it's not clear why it was so, so popular, probably because of uh, Google's uh, uh, push behind it. Um, you can see also from the actual uh, um, project pages, uh, the number of, uh, of stars of uh, interest is uh, outstanding, like almost 30,000 compared to the other three popular uh, deep learning frameworks. So now we have uh, 11,000, 4,000, uh, 4,000 for uh, Tiano, MXNet, and Cafe. Um, so why did Google open source it, right? Uh, and their mission is, uh, to address uh, um, a community that is uh, divided in three parts. You have the deep researchers that are actually trying to understand what are the new uh, core um, primitives of deep learning. Okay? Then you have the second part that are actually the research, the data scientists that use these core primitives to actually create models for a specific uh, objective. And then you have the third problem that is the engineers that you actually have to create, take this model and put it in production and make money. Okay, so by using uh, TensorFlow, you have one unified language that can address all these three uh, communities. And by putting out there, you have more people uh, working on uh, the actual uh, problem that is finding new primitives for uh, deep learning than actually reinventing the whole wheel each time. So 
let's go and take a look at the architecture, because uh, the architecture is actually what's uh, uh, very interesting uh, and what made me actually jump on this, uh, on this project. Uh, one of the main authors is uh, now legendary Jeff Dean uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, Big Table, MapReduce, all of those uh, were the uh, beginning of uh, what then became uh, the Hadoop in the open source. Uh, Google has these technologies inside, but they are not open source. Hadoop was created from this thing. Uh, LevelDB also is something that uh, uh, very, very popular and very powerful. And finally, we have TensorFlow. Um, the architecture is pretty, pretty standard uh, from the point of view of uh, engineering. You, know, you have a platform that uh, abstracts all the iOS uh, uh, OS, uh, uh, level. Then you have core that uh, takes care of uh, handling thread uh, and uh, all the resource management. Uh, stream executor is what they have to actually communicate with the GPU. Uh, so it's a very important piece of technology. It's really well done for uh, what I saw. Um, framework is uh, what we're going to actually focus in, uh, in, in the next slide. And then you have the libraries uh, uh, combined to the, to the language. So uh, it's mainly Python. There is a C++ uh, interface, so you can use C++ directly without, uh, uh, without any Python. Um, the key technology is uh, the data flow graph. Okay? You say, what, what's the data flow graph? So when we specify a program, we usually do it uh, uh, implicitly. Okay? We, spe we have our variables, then we do some operation on top of it, and uh, at the end we get uh, a result that is uh, a new data. Um, and implicitly, the system has this graph of dependency inside the, the compiled uh, binary. Okay? Uh, you can extract this graph with the compiler tools, for who of you are engineers, but it's very... It's very error prone. Uh, the language, uh, uh, this graph internally is made for the language, it's not made for actually uh, mess with it. Uh, so, by TensorFlow allows you to explicitly create this graph. Okay? So, the library is actually able to tell you uh, these are the operation, and this is the data that goes between the operation. The whole library is about saying what is uh, specifying this graph. And so the data is flowing, and we know that the data is called tensor, and so that's why you have the name TensorFlow. Because you see from, uh, from the input, uh, then you have uh, uh, math multiplication, and most of the primitives, you have gradient, uh, cross-entropy, and all the good stuff that deep learning uh, gives us. Um, and so the work of, uh, of, uh, doing, uh, uh, of using the TensorFlow library is to build this graph uh, and, the, and, and create uh, this, uh, this model. Um, the TensorFlow library, uh, I'm not going to go in detail, it's another uh, set of API that you have to uh, kind of uh, spend time with it and learn, but it provides uh, the main... Uh, um, primitives that you will need to actually do deep learning. Uh, and I'm very important, so you will have uh, uh, deep learning, tensor manipulation, splitting, joining, all the data uh, mangling that you want. And then uh, one important thing is the, the automatic differentiation. Okay, so by adding uh, uh, operations, the TensorFlow framework is able to uh, do all the back propagation that you need to do deep learning. Um, and then it has nice utility image manipulation, uh, also MP3 analysis for uh, audio and other uh, things. So we have a very, this very big uh, data graph. You can um, imagine you can have uh, even hundreds of operations. How you actually uh, explore it, no? Look how you put everything uh, together. So they provide a nice uh, tool that's called uh, TensorBoard. And this tool is a web app, and uh, it allows you to explore this uh, data flow graph. Okay, you can see all the inputs, uh, you can see all the connection, you can uh, group uh, nodes in a different, uh, 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 in a way that you like, and uh, actually uh, go in the details to see what is happening in the entire uh, system. Okay, and you can think this is very useful uh, at the research level when you want to uh, know what's, uh, what's going on uh, in your uh, uh, deep learning uh, model. And so, this is a very, very, very powerful tool. Um, 
But then you ask, okay, well, this is all nice and uh, very uh, exciting, but why we, why we need uh, a data flow graph? No? Like, can we just do as we were doing in the, in the past? Uh, and the reason is the data flow graph is very powerful because it allows you to uh, create what is uh, a distributed graph execution. You can say exactly where something is going to run, and you spe can specify that in the code. Okay, so you can say, this operation, run it on this machine. And that machine can have four GPUs, can have a, like a specialized kernel. And you can uh, manipulate this graph without having to modify it uh, too much. You can just uh, add uh, attributes. So the normal way of doing this is uh, uh, you have a parameter server where you uh, aggregate all your, uh, all your variables. Uh, you can think the state of the deep uh, learning network. And then you have the different nodes uh, uh, crunching data and partitioning your big data set. So each one is, uh, is working on a, on a part uh, of it. And uh, having it uh, explicitly defined, the graph, you can actually uh, manipulate uh, easily. And so you say, OK, each node uh, run the whole graph, or like uh, uh, we have a whole cluster, and some of, uh, of, the, of the graph is being run on, uh, on different nodes. And everything gets aggregated. Uh, all the communication is uh, being handled uh, for you. And so uh, from node to node, um, they specify um, a very define it uh, interface. You can use other uh, programming languages to actually consume this data. Uh, it's all done in a gRPC. That is a combination of uh, uh, old protocol buffer, a definition language for, uh, uh, for data, and um, um, a, new, a new way of specifying remote procedure calls. Um, OK, so TensorFlow serving is, uh, we have our uh, training server. OK, uh, we, we did our model. We uh, said, OK, we're going to distribute this, in this uh, on this node, on this cluster. Uh, hundreds of nodes will spawn up. Uh, we have our, our model. At this point, uh, what happens? The data science work is done. You want to move it to production. Um, of course, you're not going uh, to use the same uh, hardware. You want to use uh, a hardware or a, um, a platform that is specifically uh, built to handle millions of, uh, of users. So what you do is you take this model, you serialize uh, uh, in protocol buffer, in that uh, format that I said uh, before, and you just uh, upload it to uh, what is uh, um, a cluster of TensorFlow serving machines. And TensorFlow serving is also open source. And uh, uh, to serve this big data, to serve this deep learning model, you want to actually be able to batch the request uh, and wait, uh, either you wait a few milliseconds and wait for all the requests to come in, create a, a small batch, execute uh, on the machine, and, uh, and then return the results. And you want this uh, to be able to, to handle uh, concurrent requests and be able also to handle the possibility to upload a new model without any service uh, interruption. And, uh, Continue serving. So uh, TensorFlow serving is able to uh, continue serving uh, uh, the request while uh, uh, waiting for uh, new models to being uh, uploaded. And so, OK, now you can see the, the picture is about to be complete. We have, uh, uh, we have the library. We create uh, uh, our graph. We have uh, our uh, serving in production. And the nice uh, last thing is that Google open source many of its models. Okay? Uh, this is all uh, uh, for free, all uh, production level models that you can download and explore how they did. They spend months uh, doing this research, and it's uh, uh, freely available. Uh, we have a uh, syntax net, uh, and uh, this is uh, used for uh, NLP. It's construct uh, um, a graph uh, of what a sentence uh, uh, attributes are on each uh, of the terms. Uh, and this is, uh, they claim to be one of the, the best uh, out there. And the parser uh, has a very uh, interesting name, uh, Parsi McParse face. <laughs> Um, then, of course, you have Inception. This is a lower layer of the, your deep learning uh, neural network that has been enhanced uh, for vision. So it's very uh, primitive uh, uh, layers that uh, catch our uh, mind. And then 
uh, H2O and TensorFlow. So this is what I'm be working on H2O. So you have seen all this potential, but uh, um, you have to really go there and know each time where everything is and try to make everything uh, uh, work. Uh, in H2O, we're going to try to simplify all of this, so you will just use the H2O interface and we will take care of everything uh, on the back end. So the, the time is up, and uh, just thank you and come talk to me if you have more questions and follow me to have more information about TensorFlow. Thank you.